So there are typical approaches, typical questions that you are going to see uh, considering our analytical geometry. So this is question number two, again, to consider in the diagram below, the circle with the center M. So we have got a circle with the center M passes through the origin. So the origin, which is the point O, which we know that's a zero, zero there. AB is the diameter of the circle. So this is our AB, the diameter with the end points at B, which is 80, zero, and the other end point of the diameter, which is A, which we do not know. We're just going to consider that as uh, X1. But what we know is that this is the diameter, I mean, this is the center of the circle, which is M, okay? So we are given uh, the first part of our question, which was 2.1, calculate the X coordinate of point M, the X value at point M, only the X value at point M. So I was not gonna consider even the equation of the circle there because this is a direct and straightforward question. I don't know why four marks for this. Okay, because this is it guys. Remember M is the midpoint. It is the center. So it, 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 it uses the same concept as the midpoint. It is the center of AB, so it follows that M is simply representing the midpoint of what? Of AB. So if M is the midpoint of AB, which is the center, we know that it's the center, but it's the midpoint. So we can consider, because we want the X value there, and we know that at A here, this is the y-axis, and in the y-axis, always x is equal to zero, just like uh, uh, what is uh, the way that we oppose in the x-axis, y is equal to zero. That's why you see the point B is given as 80, zero. The y value there, x, y. The same thing here, x, y, it means the x value is a zero, but we do not know the y value. That is what we do not know. So if we consider the midpoint concept, we're going to win because we know that the midpoint is given from the x1 uh, plus x2 uh, over 2, y1 plus uh, y2 over 2 concept. This is how you consider the midpoint of any line. So as we are not worried about the y part, we are worried about the part of x. We need the x value. So meaning to say on this midpoint, we are going to just focus on the mid, on the X value, which is the part of our mid value. And the X value is simply taken from the X1. So meaning to say the X value at what? At M is going to be equal to the X value at A plus the X value at B, that is zero plus eight, everything over two, which is the average X1 plus X2 over two. The average, but just like that. So this was going to be four. So this is the X coordinate at, at, at the center. This is the X coordinate at the center. We do not know why the value, but we know that the X value at this point was going to be what? A four. So X at M is going to be what? Is going to be four. So like I said, guys, S four marks, I, I don't know, maybe you can consider. There's so many ways that you can consider. Maybe if you want to do that. Calculate the coordinates of the point A, the y-intercept of the circle with the center M42. Take note, you see now that X there is what? It's for. Now they are giving us this as a complete center to say the center is 42. And the question is calculate the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept of, of A? The y-intercept of A is the y-value at A. The y-value, this one at A. We need the y-value there. So if we used this midpoint concept before, we can still use the same. Because we understand this x, this y-value here at the midpoint because we've got x, y there. How you got that? This is 2.2. So the y value simply you have to consider this time you consider the part of y only. So it follows that the y value at A plus the y value here at B, which is zero here, over two from the midpoint concept, y1 plus y2 over two, must be equal to the y value at the what? At the midpoint, which is at the center. So that is why you are given the point four two.
you just consider the midpoint concept. The midpoint concept, so you can solve for y. So that is cross multiply uh, y plus zero, that's a y there is equal to two times two, that is gonna be a four. So meaning to say the y value there is a four. So the question was to calculate uh, the coordinates, uh, the coordinate of P, the point P, the Y intercept. So meaning to say the Y intercept at Y is equal to, uh, when Y is equal to four, remember there already I said X is equal to what is equal to zero. So therefore our point A was gonna be equal to zero four or it's gonna be presented as what? As zero four. The X value is already there. So that is, that is it. So this question was all about midpoint concept. Midpoint concept, that is what you're considering. Determine the equation of line OK, which is parallel to AB, and that is three marks, the equation of line OK. So this is our line OK, this one that we are seeing. So they are saying this line OK is parallel to the line AB. All right. On line OK, there's nothing that we can use or there's nothing that we can take so far. There is just the point O, which is the origin that we know as zero, zero. But for the fact that we are given that these two lines are parallel, what is it that you're going to consider? If OK is parallel to line AB, what is it that you're supposed to consider? That is the question. So if these two lines are parallel, we know that the concept is on the gradient there. These two lines, they are supposed to have the same gradient. So it follows that the gradient of line OK must be equal to the gradient of AB. Why consider the gradient? Remember, we need the equation. And the equation of a line, you're gonna consider Y is equal to MX plus C. We need the gradient there. But on OK, there's nothing to use to determine the gradient, there's nothing. But because you're told that these two lines are parallel, you work with A, B. Why working with A, B? Because at A, B, we have the point A, we have the point B. Remember, we calculated the X coordinate, the Y coordinate at A, uh, the X coordinate, that's a zero there, and we said uh, the Y coordinate is what? It's a four. So we have that. So you can calculate the equation, I mean, the gradient of this line A, B. The gradient of line A, B from the change in Y over the change in X, that's Y2 minus one over X2 minus x1, we are going to have this as uh, a, b, the y value uh, at point b, that's a zero minus the y value at point a, which is four, so that's zero minus four over the y value here, which is eight minus a zero there, or you do the other way, four minus zero over zero minus eight. As long you consider it properly, you're gonna have the same answer, so that was going to give you a minus up. So this gradient of AB is the same as the gradient of OK. So we can take that as an advantage in the calculations to say, if the gradient of OK is equal to the gradient of AB and this is equal to minus one over two, therefore our equation from this format, it is going to follow that the equation is gonna be equal to um, MX plus C, that is our M is the gradient, that is half of X plus a C, which as a C is the, Y intercept and this line, if you were to check, it passes through the origin, which is the line or uh, through which is the point zero, zero, the way X is zero, Y is zero. So the Y intercept there, that's a zero there. So Y is equal to zero. So Y is equal to minus half X plus a zero, which is simply minus half X. Or you can substitute the point uh, that you are given, which is zero, zero. When X is a zero there, Y is a zero also. So meaning to say Y, uh, C is equal to zero. There's nothing to represent for C. So it will be just minus half of X, just like that. So you have got the equation. So in this case, you took advantage of being parallel. If the lines are parallel, they have the same gradient. If they are perpendicular, the product of the two gradients should be minus one if they are perpendicular, but these ones, they are parallel. 2.4, determine the X coordinate of T, all right? Which lies, which lies on line OK, such that AT is the shortest distance from A to line OK. Okay, let's check. We need the X coordinate of T here at this point T in such a manner that this AT is the shortest distance uh, from A to OK, from O 
from A here to this line, OK. This is the shortest distance. All right. So this is the idea about uh, being the shortest distance. Uh, if you consider, let's say, there is a point there, then there's a line. The shortest distance from a point to a line is the line is the distance that is perpendicular to that line. The shortest distance is the perpendicular distance from that point to the line. Whenever you want to move uh, or you want to take the shorter distance or the shortest distance, you must move perpendicular to where you are going. Perpendicular at 90 degrees. In that manner, you will travel the shortest distance. So, if that is the case, that uh, this is the idea of the shortest distance, and what we need there is the x value at t. Okay, so the idea is that these two, they are just perpendicular. That is what we can get. So if these two are perpendicular, what is it that we obtain from that? Is it going to help us find C? No, no, not at all. This cannot help us. Being perpendicular does not help us to find this T, the coordinate T, cannot help us. But being perpendicular, it can help us to determine the equation because we understand the idea of the gradient that I explained before that the product of the two gradients must be equal to negative one if the two lines are perpendicular. So it was going to be that advantage now, 2.4. Uh, since it is the shortest distance, it follows that AT, which is the shortest distance, is perpendicular to OK to the line OK. So therefore, the gradient of line AT times the gradient of the line OK must be equal to minus 1. And we calculated the gradient of OK before, remember, uh, we had, I mean, the gradient of AB, this one. Uh, we do not have this uh, gradient of uh, uh, OT, but we know that these two, they are what? They are parallel. So we say the gradient of AB is the same as the gradient of OT, which is minus half. So we have this, which is the same gradient. Remember, I said they are parallel. So meaning to say we have the gradient of OK, which is minus half. So the, it follows that the gradient of line AT that we want times the gradient of OK, which is minus half, must be equal to minus one. So what is the gradient of 80? You simply have to divide by minus half. Since this is a product, what do you do to remove that? You divide. So this is going to divide. So we have got the gradient of 80 equal to minus one over minus one over two like this. So this was going to give us a two. Why calculating the gradient? We need an equation because what we simply understand is that this line 80 and the line O to K, they do meet at T. And this T is the point of intersection that we have here. This T represents uh, the point of intersection. So what is it about the point of intersection? It follows that at the point of intersection, the two lines are equal. So you can solve that point. We can determine by our simultaneous equations. So the purpose of having the gradient of AT, which is uh, uh, which is two from this concept, it was that we might have the equation of the line AT. Knowing its gradient, we can have the gra we can have the equation because we've got the point O, which is zero four, uh, which uh, which lies on AT. It's enough for us to have the what the equation y is equal to mx plus c. Y is equal to M, which is the gradient, which is 2X plus C, which is the Y-intercept. And in this case, we can take an advantage of what we have. A is the Y-intercept. And the Y value there is 4. So you can just write plus 4 because C represents the Y-intercept. Yes, you can write plus C, then you come back and substitute. It is up to you, but it's the Y-intercept there. It's there. The Y-intercept is there. So we are saying at the point of intersection now to find the coordinate of T, which is at this point, we just need the X coordinate of this point, which is the X value 
only the x value. That is the, 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 the instruction of the question, the x value. So at the point of intersection, the two lines are equal. They are, we are going to solve AT. We've got its equation. Y is equal to 2X plus 4. This is the equation of AT. We also have the equation of OK. Remember, we calculated the equation of OK when we said these two lines are parallel. We have this equation. Y is equal to minus half X. So at the point of intersection, these two, they are equal. The two lines are equal. So if the two lines are equal at the point of intersection, it follows that the equation of y is equal to 2x plus 4, and the equation of y is equal to minus half x. They're equal. y is equal to this. y is equal to this. So what is equal to y is the one that we just also equate. What is it that is equal to y? y is equal to 2x plus 4 from the first equation. y is also equal to minus half x on the other equation. What is equal to y? Equate that. Formulate an equation. So therefore, it follows that uh, this is going to be equal. 2x plus 4 is equal to minus half of x. Then you can solve. So as you can see, it's just for x, this equation is just x. We just x that we are considering there. Just x. We do not have y there. So you can solve for x. This is a linear equation. Transpose the x to the other part of the equation. Uh, remember, guys, minus half is same as 0, 0,5. Minus 0, 0,5. So it's same as we put minus 0, 0,5x. So if you take it this side, it's going to be 2 plus uh, 0, 0,5x, which is equal to, I transpose the 4 to the other end. It was a positive 4. So on the other side of the equation, it will be a minus 4. So divide. But before that, you can just add 2 plus 0, 0,5 or 2 plus 1 over 2, which was going to be 2 and a half or 2,5x, which is equal to minus 4. So to find x, we can just divide by 2,5 or by 2 and a half or 5 over 2, depending with what you are, the way that you use there on your uh, simplification. So this was going to give us a negative 8 over 5 if we divide properly. So this is the x value at the point of intersection at point T. So if the question was for us to determine uh, not just the x coordinate, but the point T, you need the x value and the y value. So what were you going to do? You were going to substitute the x value in any one of these two equations. Remember I said at the point of intersection, the two, they will be equal. The two lines are equal, meaning to say, at this point of intersection at T, the X value on line AT is the same as the X value on line OK. That is the idea. So there you use simultaneous equations uh, concept at the point of intersection because the two lines are equal. So you can solve those equations simultaneously. But since you wanted only X, solve what you are being asked only.